Hello, everyone. You see the title, and yes, this is real. Florida man kills ex-wife and stepson in dispute over lights left on in the house, authorities say. Um, this is not part of my more Florida foolishness series, um, but I did find this interesting and I wanted to talk about it. Um, I know um, Nick, Truth, and Sly, shout out to the Inquisitors. They have been all over this stepfather thing, actually fathers, period, um, since forever. Um, and I just found this article interesting and I wanted to read it. And um, the, we got a little bit of video and we'll do that too. So it says here, a recently divorced Florida man fatally shot his ex-wife and her adult son in a rage over electricity and leaving the lights on in the house, Florida authorities said. Michael D. Williams, 47, was arrested Sunday evening, and this is from the 21st, okay, and charged with two counts of first-degree murder in the deaths of Marsha Ebanks Williams, 48, and Robert Adams, 28, the Volusia Sheriff's Office said. Hmm. Williams had called 911 just before 8 p.m., stating he shot the victims in self-defense at the D-Land home he still shared with Ebanks following their June divorce after 10 years of marriage, according to the sheriff's office. When deputies responded to the home in the Daytona Parks Estates neighborhood, they found Williams sitting in a vehicle parked in the driveway where he surrendered and Ebanks, Williams, and Adams dead in the home, the sheriff's office said. Inside, they also found Adams' two, two unharmed young children, ages five and six, who were visiting their dad from Tallahassee and may have seen the violence unfold. So I wondered if um, the 28-year-old son lived there, too. Um, Chief Deputy Brian Henderson said the detectives determined that Williams launched the rampage, <laughs> launched the rampage over arguments he had with his ex regarding electricity in the home. Williams told official he shut off power in the house, locked the electrical panel, and left on Sunday. But when he came back, he found Ebanks, Williams, and Adams had cut the lock, restored power, and placed a new lock on the panel. Michael was upset that he felt they were leaving the lights on in the house, and he went and put a lock on the box outside of the house, which Marsha and her son cut, Henderson said at a news conference Monday. So he became upset and that started this argument, which ultimately resulted in these two people being shot and killed. Williams told investigators that he was attacked and punched in the face, but Henderson noted that he appeared unscathed. At the news conference, Henderson held up a mugshot of Williams saying, "He this does not look like a violent attack to me that warrants being shot multiple times. Henderson condemned the attack saying, this is absolutely senseless. This was an argument over electricity in which he became enraged and committed this kind of violence. Tensions in the home arose to a boiling po point over the past couple of months. Williams and Ebanks remained living together following their divorce with plans to eventually sell the home and split the proceeds, Henderson said. Not a good idea. But living together wasn't a smooth process. The sheriff's department had responded to at least five calls at the home in recent months regarding disputes over the property and their living arrangements, but none amounted to threats of violence. Henderson called the relationship toxic and revealed that Ebanks Williams had called the sheriff's office just hours before the attack Sunday looking for legal advice. Mm hmm. Williams's criminal history includes arrests on charges of domestic violence, battery on a law enforcement officer and child abuse. Anderson said he was not convicted of any of those crimes. He was transported to Volusia County Branch Jail early Monday and remains there with no bond. His arrangement, his arraignment, excuse me, has been scheduled for October 19th.
NBC News has reached out to an attorney listed for Williams for comment. And that's it. Okay, let's play our video. This is absolutely senseless. This was an argument over electricity. Investigators say 47-year-old Michael Williams, seen here at his first court appearance at the jail where he's being held without bond, became enraged at the family home on East Parkway near Deland Sunday night. Angry that his ex-wife, Marsha Williams, her adult son, 28-year-old Robert Adams, and Adams' two young children visiting from Tallahassee were using too much electricity. He felt that they were leaving the lights on in the house, and he went and put a lock on the box outside of the house to which Marsha and her son cut. Investigators say there was a confrontation between suspect Williams, his ex, and his stepson, and just minutes before 8 p.m., deputies say Williams made this 911 call. I had my weapon on me, and while they're attacking me, I had to basically, I had to, I basically I shot him. You mm. shot him? Yes, I shot him and his mother. Keep your hands up above your head. Keep backing forward. Investigators say the suspect was waiting for them when they arrived on scene and surrendered. Sheriff's office! Sheriff's office! Inside the home, investigators say they found the victim's bodies, and in another room, the stepson's two children, five and six years old. The children were not hurt, but investigators believe they may have witnessed the murders. He goes into this rage. I don't know any other word to describe it, and this is what we're left with. Williams claimed his ex and her son attacked him first, kicking him and repeatedly punching him in the face. Suspect Williams told deputies he fired in self-defense. He claims that he was violently attacked by these two. Now, I don't see anything on this guy. This does not look like a violent attack to me that warrants being shot multiple times. Hmm. Okay, so, oh, hold on. Oh, sorry about that, y'all. Anyway, so, okay. The cop, okay, I'm just going to say it like this. I don't think that this was just about the electricity. I think that the guy snapped. Um, like I said, you know, um, you know, it isn't just the inquisitors, but there's been also a lot of other uh, brothers, even white men, have talked about um, being taken advantage of and feeling used, and there not being any upside to being a stepfather. Um, We've heard all the horror stories. I have cousins who I've heard their horror stories also. I think um, that this electricity issue is a culmination of many things, which is probably why the guy divorced, you know, they divorced in the first place. Um, yeah, he has a criminal history, but um sure she knew that and she married him anyway. Um Again, you know, um, she has an adult son and he quite possible that he was in the house living there and he got sick of that too. It's not good. It's, it's very sad that um, everybody's life is over and these two kids don't have a father. Um, but here we have it yet again. Um, you know, man who was uh, a stepfather has thrown his life away. I have, a, I had a, I'm just going to tell a quick story. Like I, I had a cousin, he had a girlfriend. She had um, two or three sons and he really cared about this. He really cared about this woman and he took her and her boys in. And he really tried to do the right thing by those boys. And uh, I believe at least one of them was over 18, but um, he couldn't he couldn't say anything to these boys. They, they didn't want to work. They didn't want to go to school. And she was constantly undermining him when it came to him saying anything about those boys. And she didn't have to work at all. He, you know, had a very good job, paid all the bills. The boys didn't want to do nothing around the house. 
And eventually, you know, to make a long story short, he told her her sons had to go. She could stay. So she put the boys, you know, she let the boys go, but he found out a couple weeks later that um, from a neighbor that while he was gone at work, she was sneaking the boys in as soon as he would leave for work, he would go drive around the corner. You know, her sons would be there all day long, laying up, smoking weed, doing whatever. And then she would, you know, uh, send them out the back door as soon as he would be, you know, close to coming home from work. You could pretty much set your watch to him. And uh, then, you know, eventually when he found that out, uh, he put her out too. So it, it <laughs> I can understand why. I guess because, you know, I have uh, male friends and, you know, and I have male cousins who have told me their horror stories of being taken advantage of by women with children. Um, you know, these aren't the women that we have running around here now. They're not the women of the past who made sure that their children respected the man of the house. Because um, my father, uh, he had eight brothers. And a couple of his, two of his brothers had stepchildren. And as children, we didn't even know until we were like teenagers that they, these particular two, these particular cousins were stepchildren because they were all, they were all treated the same. You know, um, it was never, a, there was never any of those, oh, that's my stepson, that's my this, and, you know, or my stepdaughter. That was, we just, we just thought that they were uh, my uncle's child, just like uh, the other ones were. Uh, these women, again, you know, and the ones that have kids, and, you know, they pretend that these things don't happen, that they don't get in the way. I, there's plenty of men, plenty of Black men, that have been willing to take on a woman and her children. They still will do it. But again, I mean, you know, what's in it for them? But, you know, they don't care. And again, you know, their men are gaslit into thinking that they're wrong for questioning what's in it for them. There's nothing wrong into thinking that. That, that, that a man, especially a man with no children, is throwing his life away by marrying a woman with children raising another man's children. There's nothing wrong with questioning that. And there's nothing wrong with saying, hey, look, I don't want your baggage. You have your own life to think about. There's nothing wrong with saying that. And uh, these women are just going to have to understand that. And maybe if enough of them hear it, then maybe the younger ones will start making better choices. Anyway, I feel uh, very sorry for all of these people. It's, it's very, very sad that this happened. And um, honestly, like I lived in Florida for, for, for years, so I can understand why he would be upset. If he's paying the electric bill, I can see why he would want to control the amount of electric that's being used. So he probably had enough. And I believe that he snapped. I don't think this is just about the electric. And um, that's all I really wanted to say about that. Oh, so here's the case of another stepfather who threw his life away.